I've always had an affinity for pumpkins. I adore them, eating them, carving them, looking at them, smelling like them. I even have a stationery company named After Pumpkins. And so it's not all that uncommon for me to wake up thinking about pumpkins. As you can see, it started off like any normal day. A few pumpkins, but nothing out of the ordinary. I drank my pumpkin pie spice tea, as usual. Though I must admit that I was thinking about pumpkins more than I usually do. Not that there's any wrong amount to think about pumpkins. And it was hardly surprising that I was thinking about pumpkins an abnormal amount, because there was this beautiful green pumpkin in the kitchen that we'd been given by some friends. Oh, and a very abnormally shaped squash. Very convenient, this. As we all know, squash makes the best kind of headrest. I don't think I can put this off any longer. My grandmother once gave me some very good advice. When you can't stop thinking about pumpkins, there is only one thing to do, and that is to go to every pumpkin enthusiast's favourite place, the haven, the sanctuary, the refuge that only otherwise comes to us in dreams. And that, of course, is the not-so-humble pumpkin patch. It was, I knew, the only way to get pumpkins temporarily out of my mind. Unfortunately, this one is rotten on the other side of that thing. Now, all pumpkins are beautiful, even ones already half infested with maggots. And that's why it's easy to while away a couple of days at a pumpkin patch as you search for the perfect one. And I very happily could have walked out of here with three dozen new pumpkins, but I was here with something specific in mind, and that was to find a pumpkin larger than my head, which ended up being surprisingly tricky. <laughs> it's very heavy. I must admit that I was almost losing hope when I finally saw it. Spotted it, there across the plain, hidden behind other pumpkins. The perfect one. That will definitely go in my head, won't it? Let's measure the circumference. What a heat measure. <laughs> Look, it comes with a free slug. Embrace it. Yeah. That's cool. With my goods and my slug secured, we ventured over to a booth where we could pay. This is my favourite coat. Can you put that one in here? It's been pumpkin. And I did get my coat muddy, but it's easy to forgive when the perpetrator in question is as beautiful as this pumpkin over here. Just to reassure it that I was not mad, I gave it a quick bath, apologising for the freezing cold water, which was also very dirty. No. I think he's going to get a chill. Oh my god, it's very heavy. Do we think that direction or like that? They. Mm. 
Is that good? Yeah. Next to the pineapple <laughs> that's rotten. The traditional Halloween food. <laughs> And after that incredible show, after much toil, look, the finished product, one single eye. I never said I was any good at carving pumpkins. Now the terrible thing about carving pumpkins is how much pumpkin waste there is. How on earth do people just throw away the pulp and the seeds because every part of the pumpkin is good? So of course I roasted up the pumpkin seeds to snack on later. I added cinnamon and sugar and oil and put them in the air fryer. And then I let the pumpkin pulp boil for an hour in a little bit of water before blitzing it up to make my own pumpkin puree. I'm sure you've heard the popular idiom, it's got more uses than pumpkin puree. And it's very true that pumpkin puree has a very many uses. I use it in porridge, hot chocolate, for soup and pumpkin juice. And it's very good just as is. But so good. Today I used it to make my favourite pumpkin muffins. So I set those to bake and also roasted up the solid parts of pumpkin flesh that had come out when I was carving it. And while it baked, I thought I would give my pumpkin head a whirl. And in practically no time at all, my pumpkin muffins were ready. Handily, they also came out in the shape of pumpkins, because pumpkin muffins are always better when they look like pumpkins too. And I enjoyed one of these, it was very, very good. But I was very disappointed that my best friend was not here to share these pumpkin muffins with me, because I knew that she would have enjoyed them. So, there was nothing else for it. I had to send one to Blakeney in the post. I thought it would be a welcome surprise when she got home from work one day and found it waiting for her. Thinking about it, I should probably get a tea bag too. More tea grommet. I just put that in a jiffy bag along with the note and the tea and sent it off at the post office. And finally, as the day closed and dusk fell, I found that I could stop thinking about pumpkins. 